Hi, my name is Kathleen Singh, and I'm the creative director and owner of Sunny Kilogram. It wasn't too long ago when web designers were constrained by the small number of web safe fonts that were available to them, fonts like Arial, Verdana, and Georgia, for example. While these are still great fonts, it's sometimes nice to be able to spice up a page with different fonts. Well, luckily for us, we now have a much wider selection of fonts thanks to services like Google Web Fonts and Typekit that host fonts on their servers for us. So now we can do much more with typography on the web. So today I'm going to show you how to use Google Web Fonts, which is a free service provided by Google. Let's get started. Navigate to google.com slash fonts. Um, as you can see, there are currently 624 font families, and actually this number is always increasing. You can search for a font by name or by other filters such as thickness, slant, or width, okay? And when you're searching for a font for your design, make sure that you see it in a similar fashion as to how you, you will ultimately use it, okay? For example, if I'm looking for a font for the body of my web page, I would want to make sure that the preview size is something like 12 or 14, okay? Um, and one font that I personally really like for a newspaper kind of feel is PT Serif. So I'm going to use it as an example and show you how to implement it on a web page. So let's go ahead and search for PT Serif here. Cool. Um, so this is the font that I want and to use it, I'm going to click on this quick use link here, all right? And once on this next screen, I can choose um, whatever styles I want to include for my website or web page. But notice one thing, okay? Keep your eye on this graphic here as I add more styles, all right? So adding styles actually increase the load time. So this is something to keep in mind when you utilize these uh, wonderful fonts. So for our purposes, let's just go ahead and use the normal style, nothing else, not too fancy, all right? And let's scroll down a little bit to the box that says, add this code to your website. Um, if you use external style sheets, you are probably very familiar with this. It's pretty much the same thing, all right? So we're just going to copy this a reference to this font and before I actually uh, paste it into the HTML let me just pull it up and show you this is what it looks like right now without the Google font okay um, I mean it looks okay it's simple um, and I'm using some placeholder Latin and Helvetica as my font but I think it could be improved for sure so let's go ahead and dive into the HTML um, so I already pulled it into my editor here and let's go ahead and uh, find our head section and let's hit return a couple of times and paste in the code that we just copied from Google. All right, so this is the reference to PT Serif and once I do that, I now um, have it available for my web page whenever I want to. Now the next thing is to obviously um, actually reference it in the CSS. So um, let's go to this line here, font family. This shouldn't be um, new to you either if you've already worked with CSS before. Um, this is just a property that allows me to list all the fonts that I want to have available, right? And um, this is obviously the first font, but if this font's not available, um, it would go to this next one down the line. Anyway, um, for us to reference PT Serif, we would do something very similar, except that the name of the font has to be inside single quotation marks. So here we go. Single quotation mark, PT Serif, uh, another quotation mark, and let's uh, separate it with a comma. Okay, and um, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at the HTML. There we go. It looks a lot better, right? It has a more of a, a vintage newspaper kind of feel. And all we did was change out the font. 
These web font services really opened the doors for us as designers to play with typography on the web. But just because we have infinitely more choices now doesn't mean that we should pepper a web page with 20 different fonts. We should still employ the less is more rule and only use fonts that really serve to make our design and user experience better.